I'm Gina Johnson. I am from Los Angeles, California. And I'm Sheila Johnson, also from Los Angeles, California. This is my mom. <laughs> my <Yes>. baby. <laughs> so we actually came to run the Berlin Marathon uh, with our charity, Team World Vision. And so I ha when I knew that we would be able to come to Berlin, uh, I thought, what's in Eastern Europe? Uh, and there were two things that were in Eastern Europe. One is my sponsored child, Desara, lives in Albania, and I've never met her, but I've been co corresponding with her for uh, four or five years, uh, and the opportunity to see her grow up was amazing. Uh, and then my friend Nolan, who went to university with me um, 25 years ago, um, actually his older sister was my classmate, and he came two years later, and so since he was here in Croatia, I thought, we could visit Albania, we could visit Croatia and Berlin. We were able to see the, um, the lakes, which is a World Heritage Site, was absolutely built beautiful. And we were able to spend a lot of time with um, Nolan and with uh, the people uh, of Focus uh, and to um, learn about um, the work that they're doing here in Croatia. So this was actually our first run since we ran the Berlin Marathon. We started in 2005 uh, running marathons uh, because a friend of mine um, convinced us that we would all train together and then we would all run the Los Angeles Marathon together. Uh, and so um, it was my mom and myself and one other friend of ours that lived in Los Angeles and decided to train. And then the other person who, whose idea it was, um, was uh, living in Texas. And so she was gonna come to California and run the marathon. So we started to train and we all got ready to run the marathon and she has never yet run a marathon with us. Um, now it's been uh, 25 and 24 marathons that we've completed. And uh, so um, we are still running. Uh, and around 2009, we were able to be connected with a, an organization called World Vision. Uh, that is a Christian humanitarian organization um, that is the largest non-government organization providing clean water in the world and also engaged in child sponsorship. Um, so um, by sponsoring a child in a community, an underserved community, we're able to um, bring clean water, food, education opportunities, some microfinance um, to teach um, some uh, skills around child protection uh, and um, also some Christian discipleship. By matter of fact, I beat her in our very first marathon. Uh -huh. We ran the first eight miles together. We trained together that whole season and she left me at eight and at about mile 25, she hears people hollering my name and she's hit the wall and she's walking and mommy, I can't finish. And I'm like, we've trained too hard for this. You can do this. And I beat her by one second. So that's my claim to fame that the first marathon we did, I beat her by one second. I qualified for Boston that year and then we decided, well, we'll wait for her to qualify. And we just, we've been running ever since. Marathon, my fastest marathon is three hours and 10 minutes uh, in Los Angeles. Actually, my probably my most recent claim to fame is um, at the Boston Marathon this year, 2019. I um, finished in three hours and 12 minutes, which put me in the top 25 um, in my age group. And so I got a really nice shirt from the Boston Marathon, which I will wear for the rest of my life. That's one. I think the other is Comrades, the ultra marathon that we've run in um, South Africa. Um, so the, the long Long story, which I won't make it too long, is that um, the first year our charity runs for clean water in Africa and sponsorship, and so um, we were invited to go uh, to Comrades, um, which is a 90 kilometer race. Um, they only run it in one direction each year, so it's either uphill or downhill. Um, and uphill means the first 13 miles are uphill, and the rest is up and downhill. And downhill means that there's up and down for, you know, many miles and the last 13 miles are downhill. So we were invited the first year to do it and I thought this is a great opportunity, let's go. So my mom and I, we agreed and we decided, we trained for it, we went and we ran the race, we completed the race. Um, and then uh, at the finish, my mother discovers that they have a special um, medal that they give you when you run two years in a row. Um, so it's the back-to-back -back medal. You can only get it if you run it the first year and the second year, so uphill and downhill or vice versa. Um, and so she says, well, we have to go back and run the second year. And I, I didn't think so. Um, but she convinced me we ran the second year. And by the third year, I thought I am completely done. I don't ever need to do this again. Um, and then I realized 
And God has given me the opportunity to run these long distances. Not everyone can run 90 kilometers. Uh, and so since he has, and since there are children in the world who are desperately in need, and I can connect those two, I'm gonna do it. So we did the third year um, of Comrades. Uh, Comrades gives you these very tiny medals. They're about the size of one, the one euro coin or a quarter in the US. Um, and so every other race you run, they give you these giant medals. Um, but Comrades gives you little ones. So I actually have a bracelet, a charm bracelet that I wear at least once a week uh, that has all of those medals on it. <laughs> for me, um, I, I think I've been a runner for many years. Uh, running is a really great place for me to think and pray and, and meditate and spend time just focusing on something other than myself and, and processing what my life has been and what my future holds and where I need to go um, as a Christian, as a human. Um, and so that gives me time. Uh, so there's benefits to the training. Um, the fact that we run for children um, that are in need when I really don't want to run, that's super motivating. And maybe you want to share about some of the things that we've seen in the world and seen how that running helps. Yes. And, and for me, as well getting up early in the morning on days that I don't want to I think about these children who don't have a choice there are uh, mostly girls at six seven eight years old that get up early in the morning and they go get dirty water that they have to walk four kilometers six kilometers actually more than once a day to get water that's probably going to kill them and I just like I have the comforts let me just get up and get out here and run because every fifty dollars that we raise provides clean water for one person uh, for at least 20 years but possibly for a lifetime and it gives me a lot of time when I'm running to pray, um, to see the beautiful creation that God has done and things that people that will never see up in the mountains and places like that. And often I'll say, I hear you, God, but it's like, not do I hear you, God? Okay, Lord, I'm doing what you're calling me to do. And so God has called me and given me the health to be able to get out there and run and help provide for those uh, less fortunate. And so I do. My husband and I have 11 sponsored children right now all, all over the world. And we're blessed that we're able to just be a small part of helping save lives. We um, train for a full marathon. It's months of training, usually around four months of training. And while we're training, we're telling our friends, you don't have to run. Um, but if you will donate $50 to this organization who are expert in getting water projects completed that will actually um, give clean water in communities where they do not have access. Um, World Vision is a Christian humanitarian organization who is um, well known throughout the world. They work with um, local governments. They work actually with local people. They don't go into um, communities until they've been invited. Uh, and then they're invited and then they're um, they work with local water engineers, people who really know the systems that are going to be able to be effective and will be sustainable. And so um, that's their, their duty. And all we have to do is train and invite our friends. We tell them, you don't have to run. If you just give some money, then we'll do the running and you can change lives. They have, um, they call them the Legends Club. So people who've uh, impacted um, uh, 50,000 American dollars. Um, which winds up in being about uh, a thousand lives um, that are impacted. So we have both um, impacted over a thousand lives with our running. Uh, running is just an activity that I do. I actually um, am a pediatrician um, in my day day to day work, um, which means I take care of children. I work at a community health center in Los Angeles, the greater Los Angeles area of California. The majority of my patients are um, immigrants um, from um, uh, Mexico, South America, Central America, um, or people who live in the community who don't have um, adequate um, finances to have excellent health care apart from our organization. So as a community health center, we provide primary care um, for children and adults, um, for women, um, pregnant women um, as well. At our health center, we have a pharmacy and we have um, radiology and dental care as well, and specifically dental care for children even. Um, and uh, that is designed to help the people in our community to have the best health that they possibly can have. We are all God's children. Um, one of my favorite verses out of the Bible comes from the book of Matthew chapter 25 um, and where Jesus um, says, um, what you've done to the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you've done unto me. Uh, and so um, I think one, uh, as a Christian, I believe doing unto Jesus is a pretty amazing thing. Uh, two, Jesus 
clearly identified them as his brothers and sisters. They're my brothers and sisters to the world over. So whether it's Desara who's in Albania or one of my patients who's recently immigrated from Mexico or from El Salvador or Nicaragua, um, those are my brothers and sisters and it is my obligation if I am able to make a difference in their lives to do so. So the um, sponsorship of children, um, we are able to also donate, it's um, actually less than the $50 a month um, that we give uh, to help uh, a specific child in a community which has been identified um, by World Vision as a place that is in need of help. Again, they go into the community, they spend time talking with the, the people of the community to see what, what needs they have, and then they invite parents to have their children be sponsored. Uh, one child, sponsoring one child actually impacts five children in the community. Um, because the money is pooled together to help the children of the community. So again, it may be water so that the children don't have to go and get dirty water and get sick and miss school. It may be um, providing clean water in the school. It may be uh, providing uh, housing for teachers who um, don't live immediately in the community and otherwise could not help. Um, it may be uh, health education. Uh, it may be providing a home for the doctors who work at the health center. It may be immunizations. Probably one of my favorite um, things that we visited in um, Uganda um, was a community um, health center um, that very similar to what I work at in the U.S. Um, where they have their health educators go into the community. At the health center, they identify children who are underweight. Um, they measure their arm with a band, and if, they, if their arm is not the size that it should be, they identify them. And then once every few weeks, they gather all of the families of the children who were underweight and they say bring what you have in your home, bring what you, what's growing on the trees near you, bring it. We're going to teach you how to make healthy food for your children so that they can be the right weight. And so they have a week worth of cooking classes essentially in the community for mothers and they have the children there and they teach them how to use the resources that they have in order to bring health to their children. So I, um, when I visited that over in Rwanda, I came back to the U.S. and I said, we can do this in the U.S. as well. So it's not just us from the U.S. coming into other communities and, and helping and giving and giving. We're actually learning from them because, again, we are all brothers and sisters and we can learn. So the hospital where I see newborns, um, so I see babies immediately after they're born, but they have a ministry um, where they actually remove tattoos for people who have antisocial tattoos. Uh, so the physicians, anyone, even a pediatrician can volunteer. Uh, and then the people who have tattoos um, that prohibit them from being able to get a job or from being able to maybe sometimes even be in public on a regular basis, um, come, they do either community service hours or they have to be in school and then um, their volunteer hours gets translated into removing those tattoos. So I get to play with the laser for several hours a few times a year, which is wonderful. Um, and then people who have tattoos maybe on their face or on their arms, their hands in places that um, keep them from getting jobs. Many of them are gang tattoos, sometimes things like a Nazi swastika that they've tattooed when they were in a, in a place, a bad place, and now they've been um, transformed and they're ready to, to change their lives and they can't because people are unwilling to hire them uh, you know for work um, and so we're able to remove that many of the women um, maybe their pimp put their name or something on them and now they're they're um, out of that situation and so it changes their lives so I um, came to faith in Jesus as a young child um, and when I say faith in Jesus, I mean um, the belief that um, he was a real person who lived and died um, with a purpose. Um, he was God in, in the human form who lived and died so that um, I could have my sin, um, my bad choices forgiven, and so that I could live um, the fullest life that's possible um, here on earth and in eternal life as well. And so I am. Um, 
as a consequence of that decision to follow Jesus, I entered into a relationship with him. Um, and in relationship with him, that means knowing what brings him pleasure and, and seeking that. And, and as I read the Bible, as I study the Bible, and as I learn more about what God um, wants for humanity, he designed us to live the fullest life. In John chapter 10, it says, I came that they may have life and life to the fullest. And that means for me to have full life, but also to bring full life to the rest of the people that I'm able to impact. And so um, for me to have full life means that I get to go run marathons with my mom. I get to go visit Croatia and, and Berlin and do wonderful things. It means um, that my day job uh, includes impacting lives and seeing children grow up healthy and seeing now I've, I've been in practice for almost 20 years, seeing another generation of healthy children, their parents that were my patients are now bringing their babies in to see me. Um, and it also means that I um, give as much as I can to help people um, the world over again. So whether it's in Croatia, whether it's in Albania, whether it's in El Salvador, Nicaragua, Mexico, or right in Los Angeles, California, um, then I give as much as I can um, for it brings me joy, it brings God joy, and I'm in relationship with Him. And when the person you love is, is experiencing joy, um, then I think there's nothing better in the world. For me, I would say that God is love, and the love that we project to other people all over the world, including Croatia, it comes from God. And if God is love and I'm showing love, then I'm inviting them in to be part of that same uh, love. And the intimate relationship that I have with God is he has blessed my family, the people I'm around, and people inspire me and people tell me that I inspire them and my inspiration comes from God, reading his word and what he calls me to do. And so everything that I've done, my husband, my family, the things we do, the places we go, uh, the things we've done, but not just Team World Vision, but our lives in general is all about the love that God has projected to me. And so I wanted to extend that same love to the community. And it's been beautiful here in Croatia, just meeting and smiling and just the little things. I don't have to Bible thump to you. I can smile and speak and just have a, a word and, and pray for Croatia as well. I think um, for me, um, as I've learned of the history, the long history of Croatia, again, we're from the US, 200 years is a long time. Uh, and to see, you know, how much um, struggle people have gone through um, and, how, and how people have um, overcome the struggle um, and and come together as people as humanity I think um, that uh, having God in my life um, then means um, that it doesn't mean that life is struggle free um, but it gives purpose to the struggle and purpose to the to the difficulties that I face um, and I would encourage you to seek what is the purpose behind um, my life my, my my struggle and what my family has gone through and then um, to see how you can use that to bring again life to the fullest that's what we're designed to be people who live life to the fullest Thank you.